Oh, Lenticular. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. 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 The, the taco. The sweet taco. The, the, the what? The taco. You know, it's everything that lives in the taco. Not the outside. sweet taco? No, the taco. That's the sweet taco action right there. It's a happy Halloween. And, <laughs> and you can do it like that. And if you don't have a screen and you just have a, a, a LED, you can do it with a little tiny red and blue LED light. It's like the easiest thing, I think, because they sell them at the dollar store and whatever, everywhere. And you can even do something. Oh, wow. Just with like your hand and a shadow on the wall. If you don't want to do something like that with the screen set up, you could be like boop, 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 and you could do that a lot easier. And that's shadow graphs. That's the entire thing. And that's the oldest, how old is that? That's one of the oldest forms of 3D. That's from like 19, oh, I want to say 1927 is the earliest thing that I know for sure, 100%, or 1915, something like that. They were doing um, Zigfield, like the Zigfield Follies, they had a intermission where they would do like a strip tease behind here. Yeah, and so it would be like girls getting naked, da 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 da. But since it had a screen in front of it, you wouldn't see 100% girls. Yeah, it was just like that, but it was in 3D and it was like this, and it was a totally like kitschy type of, you know, it was like a, a, a what's it called? Like a novelty act. Kind of yes. But right. yeah, but, but yeah, it was a novelty for a lust act, exactly. But it was something entirely different that drew in the crowds. And that is actually where anaglyph classes come from, like comes from that performance, uh, the shadow graph performance. And it would usually, uh, also when it was in the theaters, it would accompany a movie. So the first three movies were, uh, the first one was called The Power of Love, which was the first one in 1922 or something like that and um, all the Anaglyph movies that came around after that. And that's where um, the most iconic 3D glasses comes from. Like, you know, there's nothing more iconic than a pair of 3D glasses, the yes. little paper ones, you know automatically what that's for, right? right? You know it's for, it doesn't mean anything else. You're not confusing it with any other thing. And I think that's a very iconic thing that's kind of gotten overlooked in as far as icons go. But this is something that you can pre-record. You can do a video of this and then project the video against this and then have something else going on. There's a lot of different things. I can make something really, really small, like my fingers look really, really, really big if I want. There's a lot of things that you can do creatively with this that you have no way of doing with any other types of form of 3D. I can switch this from uh, pseudo to ortho and ortho to pseudo just by switching the lights around. And um, I can make all sorts of crazy, inventive, fantastic, weird stuff that doesn't exist in real life. And uh, just like on the fly. And it's also a way to do live performances that you don't ever really have a chance of doing in any other way of doing 3D. So I think it's a very underrated and unexplored, underexplored type of thing. And it's a lot of fun, and you can have a 3D dance party, and it can oh, be yes. 3D. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. And yeah, exactly. There's so much, like, just like, just even doing that. Like, there's no way that you could see what the hell this would be on a 2D thing. If this had just the 2D information, it would be 